A love story between two people, two different religions, amidst war. Will this love bloom? Let's find out. Circa 1914, Philadelphia. Lillian Rowe, a nurse, is standing near the window, looking out lost in thoughts. This is the story of her journey to the beautiful country of Istanbul. She is eager to tell us her purpose for going there, how she managed to reach there and what she experienced on this life-altering journey. Like any other ambitious woman, she thought she would change the world. But, of course, it was the world that changed her. A scream breaks her thoughts. She rushed to find a severely injured man carried by two men. They are calling for a doctor. The other staff members block them saying they can't be there. The men beg to save their friend. Lily rushes to handle the situation. She calms the staff, saying it is okay, and directs the men to help their injured friend lie on a nearby bed. She asks them how their friend got injured. The drill bit had broken loose, gashing into the man's throat. Lily assures Sam, the injured man, that he is going to be all right. Lily turns to the staff, asking them for help as she desperately tries to stop the bleeding, by tightly pressing her hand on the deep gash. But the attendant refuses, saying they don't belong here. This era is known as the segregation era. The people of color faced racism and discrimination. Because of this, everything was divided, even healthcare. There were separate hospitals for them, and they were allowed to visit only those hospitals. This prompted the attendant to refuse to attend anybody who was not allowed in this hospital. For them, the divide was much more profound than saving a person's life. Lily, almost in tears now, tried one last time to persuade her colleagues to help her. But they didn't flinch. By that time, the doctor had arrived. He asked what was going on. Lily told him the patient had a deep puncture. Instead of treating the dying man, he announces that the man is in the wrong hospital. And against Lily's protests, several attendants came and carried the injured man out of there. The doctor explicitly instructs them to take Sam from the back stairs, while rebuking Lily for not following the convention. Lily is visibly shaken by this incident as she stares at her blood-stained hands. Lily hurries to attend a lecture by Dr. Jude Gresham. She reaches the venue when Dr. Jude is talking about Eastern Anatolia, a poor country where the concept of modern medicine is revolutionary. He discusses why the work of the American Mission Hospital in Van is vitally important. People come from a thousand miles away to get treated in the hospital. And the donations from generous wealthy people like that sitting in the audience make it possible to run the hospital. However, the violence and transgression in the country are some of the impediments that the mission faces. Lily is moved by the pictures of the people shown. The fierceness in their eyes and their will to survive in such difficult circumstances inspire her. Dr. Jude then talks about his journey in Van as a newly graduated doctor. Initially, he planned to stay there for a year, do his services, and then return to America to set up a prosperous practice. But that was eight years ago, because once he came to know about the people there and lived among them, he knew he would never leave. Something ignited in Lily after hearing Dr. Jude's story. Her resolve to change the world finally found a path. The next day, Lily's parents hosted a party to honor the guest, Dr. Jude. They were talking to the guest of honor when Lily joined them. She agreed that medical sciences are making advances in every aspect. Though she wished such advancements were made in the thinking of the doctors too. Dr. Ju didn't understand and asked her what she meant. Her parents try to stop her by intervening, but Lily continues and tells Dr. Jude about yesterday's incident. How a dying man was sent away from the hospital just because his skin was of the wrong color. Ignoring her parents' protests, Dr. Jude approaches Lily and assures her that no one has ever been turned away from their hospital in Van due to the color of their skin or their religious beliefs. Hearing this, Lily gains Dr. Jude's confidence to show him a truck that belonged to her now deceased brother. He was training to be a doctor when he died. Lily decides to donate the truck to the medical mission. Dr. Jude is flattered by the generous donation, but he expresses his concern that there is no way to take the truck to their hospital. Because the railroad covers only one-third of the journey, the rest has to be covered via road, which are rough trails cut through the mountains. She offers to manage the transfer because she wishes to serve a purpose, a way to contribute. Dr. Jude wishes her the best and hopes for them to meet one day. He then bids her goodbye and climbs into his vehicle. He cannot help but look back at this young woman, full of hope and determination to contribute in any way she can. At dinner, Lily is lost in her thoughts. She isn't eating much as she hears her father talk about how Europe's on the verge of war, and there is no guarantee that the truck or the medical supplies she intends to donate will ever reach Dr. Jude's hospital. Lily thinks for some time and then asks her parents if she can take the truck and supplies herself by sailing to Istanbul, and then taking it from there all the way to the hospital. Her parents immediately stop eating at this preposterous idea. They appreciate that her heart is in the right place, but they cannot just let their only daughter go on a journey that is too dangerous. They refuse to let her go. But she announces that she has already made the arrangements by booking the passage for herself and the supplies. She used her inheritance from her grandmother for her expenses. Her father argues that it is not about money. Her mother continues that it is about the fact that she is a 23-year-old young woman who isn't married yet, unlike all her friends who are married and raising families at her age. They let her continue nursing school and work with the poor, but now it is time for her to settle down and not run to the other side of the world. They further add that they cannot allow her to go. 
but nothing can change Lily's mind. She has her heart set on it. She leaves the dining table, and her parents feel helpless. Against her parents' wishes, she starts on her venture, and after two months of sailing, they see the land. She stands on the dock to embrace a breathtaking view of Istanbul. Her eyes glimmer with hope as she sees her destination approaching. As she aboards, the captain of the ship informs her that her goods will be unloaded shortly. She walks through the buzzing bazaar looking at all sorts of things hoarders are hoarding. She sticks out among the crowd as the people there are dressed very differently. Women are cladded in clothes from head to toe, while men wear robes and unique shaped hats. As she makes her way into the crowd, a man drops a wooden brush as he walks past her. She quickly picks up the brush and calls out to the man. Suddenly she hears a strange man asking her to ignore him and keep walking, as the first man lays down his shoe polishing kit and starts brushing her boots. She doesn't understand and stops for an explanation, but it is too late as the drop the brush tactic has been implemented, and is already halfway through the most expensive shoe shine journey. The strange man calls it a special welcome to Istanbul greeting. Lily politely asks the man to stop brushing her boots. The strange man talks to the boot polisher in Turkish, and he walks away. Lily thanks him and asks for a little help locating the mosque as she wants to visit it. He offers to take her there, stating that she doesn't want to miss the most beautiful mosque in Istanbul. She followed him through a small underway to a bamboo-roofed path that had sun rays sieving through it, making everything underneath look striped like a tiger's skin. She could hear the calling prayer. She climbs a few stairs to reach a marble corridor with intricate sapphire wall designs. Before going in, the man asks her to take her shoes off and cover her head. Once inside, she is awestruck by the divinity that the place possesses, apart from ethereal designs on the wall that extends all the way to the center of the dome. With numerous windows letting in, a soft glow of the sun illuminates every corner of the mosque. It makes her feel like being inside God's thoughts. Soon the superiors of the mosque arrive, and the man cuts short their visit. He finally introduces himself as Lieutenant Ismail Veli of the Ottoman Imperial Army. She gives him her name. He wishes her visit to be pleasant but brief as a war is coming. Lily's truck is being unloaded. The man accompanying her, however, expresses his incapability to deliver the truck safely to its destination, because the Ottoman Empire may be entering a state of war at any time now. The goods intended for the American missions are being detained, so he presents her with her only choice of returning home. Lily shows no intention of returning, so the man suggests another way in which she can obtain permission, which requires her to find a military escort. Lily can think of only one name. Ismail is talking to his uncle, a military superior, showing his displeasure at Lily's request for him to escort her. His uncle tells him that she specifically requested for him, and asks him to see this as an opportunity. Ismail cannot determine what his uncle means as the hospital is in the middle of nowhere. What can possibly come out of it? His uncle explains that once the war begins, Russia will try to expand its borders into Anatolia. Now it is to be determined whether the Armenians in the region will stand with their empire, or join the Russians against them. Now Ismail understands why this can be taken as an opportunity. His uncle wants him to be a spy. At the station, Lily looks over the preparation of her truck, and the medical supplies being tied to the train. She spots Ismail and comes to thank him for his help. However, Ismail sarcastically remarks that he should be thanking her for this great opportunity she has provided him with, to put aside his military career, and help her drag her boxes and ridiculous truck to nowhere. Lily is taken aback by such a rude comment and is left speechless. The train starts with its journey. Lily looks at the scenery, but her mind is stuck on the lieutenant's impudent remark. There are separate compartments for men and women. She walks to the men's compartment and finds Ismail reading. She walks up to him and retorts that she is sorry for interrupting whatever grand plan he had for himself, because he had to take this trip with her. But his countrymen are in urgent need of medical help, and for once, he can put their needs in front of his own. All Ismail says is she can't be in that carriage. She looks around to see men with displeased faces. She quickly turns and makes her way out of there. As she reaches the intersection, Ismail calls out from behind. He followed her to the door. He warns her that there are customs here that she needs to observe, if she wants to go along. She is already irritated. As she starts with a comeback, the train jolts, sending her forward, but before she can fall, Ismail catches hold of her. They stare into each other's eyes for a second, but soon regain composure, and Lily returns to her carriage. After covering a third of the journey via train, Ismail, Lily, and their troop are riding horses through a trail of a road. The truck is also being pulled by two horses. They travel till dusk. As it gets dark, they plan to set up their camp for the night. Ismail sits with other men near the fire, while Lily stands nearby, looking far into the horizon, as the last of the sun rays before it sets light the top of the mountain into bright silver and pink hues. Ismail decides to walk to where she stands. He tells her not to wander off as it can be dangerous. She replies that she is fine and asks him about the mountain and if that is Mount Ararat, where Noah landed. Ismail replies in the affirmative and tells her that people in Istanbul call it Agri Doggy. She wants to know what that means. So to give a reference, he annotates Noah and the Great Flood, or Adam and Eve. He further explains that Adam and Eve are also part of Islamic culture. The only difference is that Adam and Eve were not driven out of the garden. 
They were placed in different parts of the world, so they searched their way to each other. With that, he heads back after asking her to stay close, leaving her with a thought to ponder upon. In the morning, Lily is still asleep when Ismail wakes her up in a hurry and asks her to hide herself. She doesn't know what is going on, so she hides behind the truck. Few men on horses come charging towards the truck. Even though Ismail picked up a rifle to protect themselves, he doesn't get the opportunity to use it. The Armenian bandits are also loaded with guns, and one of them shoots near Ismail's foot to stop him from walking any further. He tries to explain that they have nothing but medical supplies for the people in need. But the bandits are not going to let them go that easily. Ismail's boots give in his identity as an army man. The head of the bandits quickly discerns that he is a soldier. He takes Ismail at gunpoint and asks his men if he should eliminate him or if his Christian conscience will stop him. The moment he gets distracted, Ismail attacks him. Meanwhile, Lily has climbed onto the truck and is in the driver's seat in no time. She starts the engine and starts driving as she takes the truck close to where Ismail is, asking him to get in. However, Ismail's attempt to jump into the truck is thwarted by one of the bandits, who blocks his way with his horse. Ismail manages to pull that bandit down and climb onto his horse. He starts riding it behind the truck while he shouts at her to keep going and not stop. The bandits soon get on their horses and start chasing them. The chase is intense, with the goons catching up to them. One of them attacks Ismail with a knife, but he manages to throw him off his horse. The head of the bandit starts firing at Ismail and Lily, and manages to shoot one of the tires of the truck. Lily loses all control over the truck as it approaches a steep cliff. Ismail catches hold of her arm while still riding his horse parallel to the truck, and pulls her towards him just as the truck rolls down the steep cliff. She straightens herself on the horse without stopping. The bandits slow down as their targets have nothing valuable left, so they stop chasing them. Once they reach a safe distance, they start walking. It is about to pour as the thunderclouds keep rolling. Ismail tries to console Lily, saying that they were lucky they escaped unharmed, or else who knows what the bandits would have done with them. But Lily is not ready to listen. She is upset that she lost her brother's truck and all the medical supplies. Ismail advocates that the truck and the supplies would have been taken by them anyways, along with their lives. So they should thank their stars that they survived. They walk the entire day till night falls. They decide to stop for the night. Ismail makes a bed for Lily and gives her the saddle to use as a pillow, while he himself uses a rag to sleep on it, which he puts a little farther from hers. As he lies down, he is worried that today's incident will keep her from getting any sleep, but is surprised to see her already fallen asleep. He chuckles and then sleeps. For the next few days, they keep walking, and finally, after a few days of continuous walking, they reach the garrison where Ismail has been posted. Lily inquires where the mission is, and Ismail points it out to her. As they reach the hospital, Ismail says goodbye to her, but before he can leave, a voice intercepts. It is Dr. Jude. He is beyond surprised to see Lily there. He comes running to her. He asks if she is alright. She tells him that she is fine. She then introduces Ismail to the doctor. Dr. Jude thanked Ismail for bringing Lily safely to the hospital. She then walks away with Dr. Jude, but soon turns to thank Lieutenant Veli for helping her reach her destination. Once inside a building, Dr. Jude shuts the door and then asks Lily what happened to her. Lily is a little embarrassed as she covers her mouth before speaking, and telling him that she has brought the truck as promised. But unfortunately, it was stolen by the mountain bandits. She apologizes for not keeping her promise, but Dr. Jude calms her down by saying that she being alive and safe is what counts. To make up for the lost supplies, she expresses her desire to volunteer her services, as a nurse. Dr. Jude asks her again if she really wants to be a nurse here. Lily is more than determined to contribute, so she asserts that the hospital needs nurses. Dr. Jude couldn't agree more. They see a man whom Dr. Jude introduces as Dr. Garrett Woodruff, founder of the American Medical Mission. Lily expresses her wish to meet him. Dr. Jude introduces Lily to Dr. Garrett and tells him that she has come all the way from Philadelphia to bring them valuable medical supplies. Lily continues explaining from there when Dr. Garrett stops her and says she can't stay. Dr. Jude pitches in and tells Garrett she is a trained nurse, but Dr. Dr. Garrett doesn't listen to him. He directly talks to Lily and tells her to go home, because he considers a hospital as no place for a woman to be. Dr. Jude apologizes for Dr. Garrett's behavior, as he can be blunt sometimes. He offers to show her the main ward. As he is telling her the number of beds, one of the patients calls out for him. He is coughing, and Dr. Jude starts to attend to him. Lily, in the meantime, walks to another bed. A young girl lies on it. She asks her for her name. The girl doesn't speak at first, so Lily starts by introducing herself to the girl and then asks again. To this, the girl replies her name is Aghavni. Then Aghavni makes a gesture with her hands, and slowly moves her fingers to indicate a flying bird. Lily asks if her name means a bird. Dove comes a reply from behind. It is Dr. Garrett. Lily gets up the stool she was sitting on, and lets Dr. Garrett sit on it to examine the little girl as she coughs. Lily asks if it is malaria. Dr. Garrett advises her to pay attention to the symptoms. The patient has a deep bronchial cough, and the body is covered in bright red rashes. It means that the patient has typhus. He then mocks Lily for her inability to recognize the disease, and asks her a rhetorical question as to where she got her training. 
Before she can say anything, he leaves. A nurse comes running calling out to Dr. Jude. Lily follows them. The patient brought in is not breathing. Dr. Jude immediately starts looking for a pulse or a heartbeat. The man has none. Lily looks at his pupils, which are not contracted, concluding that the man is still alive. Dr. Jude finds an abscess in his lung, which is crushing his heart and lung. Lily immediately brings the tools for the emergency treatment and begins assisting Dr. Jude in the surgery. As soon as Dr. Jude makes an incision, the fluid bursts out, and the man finally takes a breath and coughs. Dr. Garrett is witnessing all this. He looks on as Lily dedicatedly helps Dr. Jude. He made his judgment about her too soon, and saw her true potential as a nurse in those moments. A few days have passed, and Lily is officially recruited as a nurse in the hospital. That morning, she is chasing Aghavni, who is healthy and running around. As she reaches the ward, she sees something familiar outside. It is her brother's truck she had intended to donate. She is beyond happy and rushes outside to see it. However, she is soon faced with the head of the bandits, Chris Stapper, whom Dr. Garrett assumes Lily knows. It is he who has bought the truck and the supplies back, and now wants to sell it to them. Jude is furious at his audacity and confronts him. She tells Dr. Garrett that he is a thief who stole the truck along with the supplies from her, and now has come to dupe the hospital for its money. To her dismay, Dr. Garrett dismisses her as they are trying to conduct business. But Chris Stepper is asking for a very high price which they cannot afford. Dr. Jude offers to take the matter into his hands, and asks Dr. Garrett to take Lily inside. In the evening, Dr. Jude comes to visit her when she is busy writing something. Dr. Jude jokingly says that he hopes it is not a resignation letter. She clarifies that she is writing to her parents. Dr. Jude tries to cheer her up, and asks her to be happy as her brother's truck has finally arrived. But she is not at all pleased with the fact that it had to be traded with a thief. Dr. Jude tells her that Christopher and his men are considered heroes in the Armenian community, because they are making a stand for Christianity against the Turkish Muslims. Lily questions his ethics as the doctors are supposed to be neutral. Then how does religion creep in? Dr. Jude tries to clarify that the war in Europe is going to split Anatolia in the middle, into the Armenians on one side and the Turks on the other. Because of the war, many people are going to get injured, and many will die. The supplies are vital in such circumstances to help everyone. This is the reason he had to negotiate, even if it was with a bandit. He prioritized necessity over morality. With this, he wishes Lily good night and leaves. With the new supplies, the treatment of the patients is going smoothly. People are getting cures, new lives are being born and some are slipping into eternal sleep. The cycle goes on without creating any hindrances in the dedication of the hospital staff. They continue treating the patients and providing their services to whoever is in need. Occasionally Lily would see Ismail on patrol duty. The whole of Europe was in a war. One day while taking a stroll, Dr. Jude tells Lily about his family. His parents died when he was young, so he didn't have anybody while growing up. Even though Lily has parents, it was her brother, Frank, who truly understood her. But he passed away because of tuberculosis. He was studying to become a doctor. She wishes he was there, he would have loved the place. Suddenly there is gunfire. One man collapses, then another is shot dead too. Dr. Jude holds Lily tight and escorts her to safety. The war has truly begun. The men are now eliminating each other. Soon a full-scale war raged in the whole of Europe. It came to be known as First World War the war to end all wars. The news of the horrors and atrocities inflicted on people loomed over the entire continent. All sorts of horrid tactics were used in the warfare planes, poison gas, etc. The war would go on for weeks or even months at a stretch before the news reached them. Even though it seemed the battle took place somewhere far away from them but somehow, they could not shake the feeling that they would not remain untouched by its bloody reach. One night Lily came out for some fresh air when she saw Dr. Jude supervising Chris Dapper and his troop, bringing some big boxes with them. Lily is visiting the garrison. Ismail is summoned. His superior instructs him to escort Lily, who will be returning a patient to a village nearby in two days. Ismail and Lily share a light banter saying it would be an honor for them. Even if they did not have a good start, they seemed to grow fond of each other as time passed. Ismail wore a smile on his face after being dismissed to make the arrangements for the journey. Dr. Garrett is in his room, and he is preparing a mask by dripping several drops of potent ether into it. He then lies down on his bed and places the mask on his. He then inhales deeply, and in just a matter of seconds, he starts to lose consciousness and soon passes out. At the breaking of dawn, Ismail, Lily, her patient, the little girl Aghavni, Dr. Jude, and a few more men mount their horses and start their journey. Later in the afternoon, they reach a small village that has been burned down. They stop outside a small house. An elderly woman comes out of the house, and as soon as she sees the little girl, she runs towards her, sobbing. Aghavni also runs towards her Yaya. They embrace each other. 
Dr. Jude asks the woman what happened in the village. She tells them that many men came with guns and swords. He asks her if they were dressed in uniforms. She tells them that they were not soldiers and adds there are some wounded people. Ismail walks to the other side to check for any clues as to who could be behind all this. While treating the wounded, Dr. Jude tells Lily that her friend Ismail is not there to protect her, but to collect information on the outlying villages. Lily expresses her concern for Aghavni's safety. Ismail is making his inspection. He goes into a vandalized church to look for clues as to who is responsible for all this. He then returns to where everybody is and announces that they need to leave immediately. Dr. Jude sarcastically makes a comment that Ismail has to report back to his superiors in reference to him being a spy for the military. Dr. Jude doesn't trust Ismail. Religious differences could be one of the reasons. Ismail keeps his cool as he reminds him that he has some mission to fulfill, the same as they do. To this, Dr. Jude cannot help himself from retorting that his mission is to save people. Ismail has had enough of the accusatory behavior, and he rebutted by saying, just because he wears a uniform and carries a gun doesn't make him a killer. However, Dr. Jude thinks otherwise as he believes that the army should have protected the people of the village. He shouts at Ismail, accusing him of supporting the cause of driving all the Christians out of Anatolia, because the inaction on the part of the army is a clear indication of that. This soon turns into a heated argument between the two men. Before the argument could escalate, Lily intervenes. They soon leave, and Lily turns back to see Aghavni one more time. Dr. Jude and Lily are having dinner together when Dr. Jude starts the conversation. He is worried about Lily's well-being, as she has seen the gruesome reality of the religious divide up close and seen men getting terminated. He wonders if that scared her. So he carefully chooses his words to be sensitive about the situation and assures her that he would understand if she chose to leave now. But Lily is stronger than she appears. Dr. Jude explains what he meant was that Armenians have to fight to avoid being cast away from their own country. Lily asks him if this is the reason he helped the bandits hide their artillery in the chapel. Lily does not approve of his methods. Dr. Jude is about to say something to her but is interrupted by Dr. Garrett. Lily asks him if he has had supper, and he denies. She offers to serve it for him and asks him to sit while Dr. Jude cleans up the table. He volunteers to take the evening rounds for Dr. Garrett while he has his dinner. Dr. Garrett lets Lily know that Dr. Jude is in love with her. Lily sits opposite him listening intently. Dr. Garrett continues that he would hate to see Dr. Jude disappointed. He reminds her what he had said the first day she had arrived in the hospital, that it is no place for a woman. Probably he had anticipated something like this to happen. He suddenly gives a reference of a woman but doesn't go into details. He discusses his philosophy and his profession as a doctor. For him, it is a game of survival against death and disease. He doesn't expect her to understand it then but hopes she will understand in the future. With that, he gets up and takes the wine bottle before leaving. Lily sits even after he has left, pondering what Dr. Garrett said about Dr. Jude. She has never viewed Dr. Jude as anything more than a very good friend. The next day, a man comes running to the hospital carrying a bleeding young boy in his arms. His eye is injured because of glass shards. Dr. Garrett is operating on him while Dr. Jude observes and Lily assists. After cleaning the wound, Dr. Garrett starts the extraction of the fragments. But he cannot hold a steady hand which could result in the boy losing his eye. Dr. Jude offers to take it from there. Dr. Garrett agrees that it would be good training for him and walks away. Dr. Jude can sense something is wrong and looks at him as he leaves. That night Lily comes to visit Dr. Garrett in his room. Dr. Garrett is sitting in the dark, breathing deeply, staring into nothingness. She sees a broken frame on the floor. She reaches out to pick it up when Dr. Garrett asks her not to touch it. She picks it up against his wishes and looks at the picture. It is a picture of Dr. Garrett with his wife and daughter. He tells her they died of typhus. He did everything but couldn't save them and started sobbing. He continues that God is cruel because he took his only family from him. He believed in God, but nothing could save his precious wife and daughter from dying. Lily decides it is time for him to take some rest. It has been a difficult day for him, so she helps him get to bed. Dr. Garrett tells her that he started this hospital with her. She tries to dissuade him from torturing and blaming himself for the loss, by saying his wife would never have wanted this for him. She tucks him into the bed when she sees the ether and the mask. She puts them in the box and takes them with her when she leaves. Dr. Garrett looks at her with the same love as for a daughter, which he craved after his daughter passed away. That morning Dr. Garrett wakes up fresh after a good night's sleep, after a very long time. Lily is out in the field riding her horse when Ismail surprises her by joining in. They ride their horses for a long time before they stop to rest near the edge. From there, they get a panoramic view of the lake and a small island nearby called Aktemer. Ismail tells her that there is a beautiful old church on that island and offers to take her there. She agrees, and they both go to borrow a boat. Ismail paddles the oars, and Lily enjoys the cold water under her hands. She says how being in the water makes the rest of the world go away. She said something like this when they first met. Ismail remembers that and uses the same phrase as she did, that it is like being inside God's thoughts. She smiles hearing this. On the island, they appreciate its beauty and delve deeper into the conversation. Ismail asks her if she is glad she came to Istanbul. She tells him that she is glad she came here. Initially, she was running away from home. 
she couldn't be what others wanted her to be. This she says in reference to the vast divide and hypocrisy that existed in her country. For Ismail, he didn't have much of a choice. It was his family business, so he had to become a soldier and join the army. She questions his desire ever to break free from all these restrictions. For him, freedom is an illusion, and I'll take the role they are given. She doesn't agree with him. For him, too, the more he sees her, the more he sees the flaws in his beliefs. While sailing back, their boat stops in the middle of the lake for lack of breeze. After thinking for a while, Ismail confesses that he has wanted to touch her since the day they met first, but his religion doesn't allow it. Them belonging to different religions is more important than their feelings for each other. Lily likes him too because she would always request for him to be her escort. So she asks him if Adam and Eve belong to any religion. In fact, they belonged to none of the religions and shared the same god. This gives Ismail the strength to believe that love might conquer all. He finally kisses her expressing his long-held desire to do so. And when he finally does, he realizes how much he loves this woman. Lily feels the same. She blushes as she looks at him, now that things have changed between them. Ismail drops her at the hospital. Dr. Jude receives them at the entrance. He shares they were worried about her, but she assures him she is fine. He expresses to have a word with Ismail. Dr. Jude is not happy about Ismail getting close to Lily and spending time with her. He reminds him that his religion looks down upon socializing with Christian women. Ismail clarifies that he is friends with Lily, which is not against any religion. They taunt each other before Dr. Jude punches Ismail in the face, and a fight breaks out between the two. Both are in love with Lily, and no one wants to give up. This leads to their conflicts. Things that love leads one to do is beyond any comprehension. No one intervenes to stop two strong men fighting like mad dogs. Finally, Dr. Garrett comes and fires in the air to make them stop. He dismisses them, saying such behavior will not be tolerated on the hospital premises. Lily also witnesses their fight and is unhappy with both the men as she walks away, shaking her head. During the night round, Lily asks Dr. Jude how he is doing. Dr. Jude is angry but cannot do anything to make Lily feel a certain way. Feelings cannot be imposed or induced. So he tries to talk to her, reminding her that they share the same dream and beliefs, know each other well, and could make a life together if she wishes. But Lily doesn't share his feelings. She slowly pulls her hands from his and apologizes. Jude walks away, heartbroken. The Ottoman Empire joined the fight on the side of Germany. Russia declared war on the empire and began a massive invasion from the east. Van was directly in the path of the Russian army. For some Armenians, the Russians were their gateway to liberation. But the Armenian rebels were stamped out by the Ottomans. The rebels fought back. They took over the center of the city and waited for the Russians to arrive to join them. Ismail's mission was to infiltrate their defenses and assess their strengths. When he asks the colonel how he will differentiate between the rebels and ordinary citizens, his superior nonchalantly replies that the insurgents will be the ones trying to eliminate him. Ismail goes with his troop to the city, and a ceasefire begins. Many soldiers get put to eternal sleep before Ismail makes his way to the top of the hill, from where the rebel is shooting. He manages to get a clear aim, but he runs out of bullets. The rebel shoots at him but misses. They start fighting with their hands. In the end, he manages to stab the rebel with the knife he carries. Two children witness this whole incident, making Ismail feel helpless. He wonders when the war will stop so that no innocent life is further scarred. The military arrives at the hospital. Ismail accompanies the colonel inside, where they meet Lily. The colonel asks who the patient is whom she is treating. She gives detail of his injuries without providing the answer Colonel is looking for. Dr. Garrett and Dr. Jude join them. Colonel insists that the beds in the hospital be turned to the Ottoman army. Dr. Garrett argues that the flag on this mission is American, not Ottoman, and according to the international protocol, they have the right to administer as they see fit. He stresses on the fact that he built the hospital to help those who are in need, and if the injured soldiers are brought to the hospital, they will be cared for. Colonel, not pleased with the answer, orders a complete search of the hospital to find what they are hiding. Dr. Garrett tries to stop them, but Colonel interjects, saying it is wartime, and he has the authority. Lily knows about the artillery hidden in the chapel. She runs to stop Ismail from carrying out a search in the chapel. She pleads with him, and Ismail gets the hint. He immediately asks his men to stop and sends them to search elsewhere. She thanked him for understanding. He wishes to meet her, and she signals him to meet in their usual riding spot. Ultimately, they don't find anything and start to leave as the colonel challenges them on how they will fend for themselves when the Russians reach there. The next day, Lily goes to see him. Ismail tells her that they don't have much time as he will be leaving on a mission soon. They enjoy their time together. She returns to the hospital at dawn and finds Dr. Jude waiting for her. He immediately realizes she was with Ismail. Lily walks away. Dr. Garrett calls her as she walks by his room. Dr. Garrett stops doing everything when he sees Lily crying. He embraces her as she apologizes. Dr. Jude is in pain too, seeing his love slip away from him. He sits in the chapel and prays for this pain to dissipate. The distant explosions were not distant anymore. The Russian invasion was upon them. Ismail was sent on a mission to destroy the armory that the Russians had captured. Amit was his guide. The only one left, as the other fled due to fear of the Russians. Together they make their way to a fortified place where the armory is heavily guarded. 
Amit gives him the precise location of the weapons. Ismail asks Amit to go back even after he insists on helping. As he is making his way to the armory, he gets caught by a Russian soldier but is saved by Amit, who comes on time and takes care of the Russian soldier before things could escalate. They enter the room, which has all the weapons. Ismail is surprised at the number of firearms the chamber contains. He sends Amit to the missionary hospital to find an American nurse and tell her that Ismail sent him. Probably Ismail knew he wouldn't make it out on time and sent Amit just in case he died there. He then pours the gunpowder all over the room and sets it on fire, then dashes out before the explosion takes place. As he starts climbing the wall of the fort, when the Russian soldiers spot him and start firing at him, but the explosion saves him. At the hospital, a fellow nurse informs Lily that the Turks have abandoned the garrison and left the city. The Russian soldiers are coming their way. Lily sees someone far away coming on horseback. Her face lights up, but soon the smile disappears as she sees an unknown face instead of who she thought he was. She asks Ahmed if he saw Ismail getting eliminated. He denies. She has made up her mind to find him. Dr. Ju tries to stop her, but she is adamant. She refuses to believe he is dead. She takes her brother's truck but stops at the gate when Dr. Garrett blocks her way. He hands her a gun for her safety. She thanks him and takes off. She sees many villagers flocking to safety after losing everything to the war, their homes, families, and dear ones. The helplessness on their faces speaks bounds of the horror this war has brought upon their lives. She reaches their meeting place and tries to find him there, but he is nowhere to be seen. She sits down in distress when she hears a faint sound. Her name is being called. It is Ismail calling her. She rushes to where he lies badly wounded. She is relieved to see him alive. She helps him back to the truck, and they drive back to the hospital. While returning, they witness the unspeakable plight of humans that the war has bought. While returning, they find a group of Turkish soldiers, forcefully walking some people with them, behaving inhumanely with them. They make their way closer to the troop, and Ismail gets down, asking by what authority the soldiers are taking these people. The in charge has a heated exchange of words with Ismail, even though Ismail is senior in position. He lies that the colonel ordered for these people to be brought alive for interrogative purposes. And the in charge orders the release of the Armenians. Lily opens the truck gate to let them climb at the back. As they start climbing, Aghevni is among them, who calls out to Lily. Ismail tries to silence her, which raises the in charge's suspicion. He asks Ismail when these orders were issued. Ismail lies this morning, but Colonel Kahlo was eliminated last night. Finding no way out, Ismail pulls out his gun and points it at the in charge, asking him not to stop them. Suddenly a soldier fires at Ismail. He suffers two gunshots before he climbs on the truck, and Lily drives off. Lily tries to stop the bleeding with one hand while driving with the other. She carries him to the hospital and makes him lie on the bed. Dr. Jude and Dr. Garrett operate on him to take out the bullets. He tries to stop the bleeding, but Ismail loses a lot of blood. Outside, the Russians have reached. Dr. Jude comes out briefly to tell the Russian soldiers that this is a hospital and offers to attend to any of their wounded soldiers. Hearing this, their head orders his men to retrieve. From the back of the hospital, Ismail makes his way out. Lily runs after him, but he explains that if the Russians find him there, they will eliminate all the people in the hospital. So he is making his way to his troop on the other side of the lake. She helps him mount a horse and then climbs herself. They set out for the lake, carefully making their way, hiding from the soldiers. The day breaks, and Lily paddles the boat to the other side of the lake. Ismail lies wounded, coughing occasionally. It is too much for Lily to bear seeing the love of her life suffer in front of her, but she keeps a strong face. Ismail's breathing becomes shallow, and he asks her to stop rowing. He knows his end has come, but Lily refuses to listen to him. He gestures her to come near him and be with him. She doesn't want just to give up when they are so close to the other side where his men can save him. But seeing him struggle to breathe, she lies next to him, holding him in her arms. They look at the star-clad sky, and once again, Ismail says it is like inside God's thoughts. At this point, she cannot hold back her tears, so Ismail asks her not to be afraid and then passes away in her arms. She cries till her tears dry up. She stays on the boat with him till the dawn breaks. She then buttons his uniform while remembering all their moments together. Before covering his body with the cloth, she looks at him one last time, caressing his sweet face. She ties his body with a rope and lays him to rest in the lake. This place was special to them as they kissed for the first time on it. Now he rests here making it her mecca of love. Before riding back she embraces the horse as if finding comfort in the warmth. The horse lets her hold it almost like feeling her emotions. She rides back to the hospital and finds Dr. Jude and Dr. Garrett operating injured. She looks at them with her now puffy eyes and in an instant, they understand her loss. She walks without saying anything. She then changes into her dress and scrubs her hands before resuming her duties as a nurse. Her journey has made her resolve even more strong to serve those in need. After spending the most memorable, life-changing moments in this country, she believes she is meant to be there and continue doing what she volunteered for. This country gave her so much more than she could ever have gotten back home. She still believes in God, even after he took the love of her life away from her. She hopes that the war will end and that peace will return one day.